It gives bright, by the way. All right, everybody. I think we've got most people coming in, but uh, we're going to get going here. Uh, let the rest of the people funnel in in the back. My name is Lucas Strom. Uh, I'm going to moderate our session here. This is social media, the new essential tool. If this wasn't what you're expecting, check your agendas and there's, there's some other stuff going on, but uh, hopefully you're in the right room. Um, we're going to keep this one light. This one's going to be a little less serious. We're going to talk, we're going to be serious a little bit, but we're going to have a little bit of fun too. So if, and if anyone knows these guys, you, you know why. Um, so social media and how does this have to do anything with agriculture? Um, the first uh, graph that we're showing you here is just how many users on the different social media platforms. Uh, and I didn't even realize this until I Googled it the other day. But uh, on Twitter alone, we've got about 400 million-ish, 300 and some 400 million. Uh, Facebook's got over 2 billion. Uh, and if you think about uh, the different uses, and, and I know that we were talking behind stage here about the different ways that some of these different platforms are used. Uh, there's different reasons why people are on these different platforms and, and quite honestly, uh, since I've been here at FBN and, uh, and been farming, it seems like the last four or five years this has really kind of caught on fire. Uh, I think it's probably talked about at pretty much every conference or any, any time or any place uh, you go and, and meet up uh, as farmers here. So I just wanted to show you those stats real quick. Um, this was a fun statistic that our, our data sciences team did. Uh, and this is going to be a study on correlation versus causality uh, because what it tells you is we looked at all of our Illinois farmers and all of our Illinois farmers on Twitter, which there's two of us on this panel from Illinois that are on Twitter, and the Twitter farmers out yield the non-Twitter farmers. <laughs> wow. Now, that doesn't mean if you're not on Twitter and you get on Twitter that your yields are going to go up. No, um, they're, they're correlated. It doesn't cause you to be a better farmer, but uh, hopefully we can talk about maybe, maybe why that is, um, and it's not just because of Steve's yields and uh, his overly optimistic uh, yield monitor on his combine. Um, I, we just thought it was a kind of a fun little study. Um, Hi, Sean. I knew I was going to be able to read these, so I'm going to turn around. Um, just a couple of quick things. These are some of the points I think we're going to chat about. Why social media? Networking, counters isolation, knowledge, learning from experts or quasi experts, um, community news, marketing, building a brand um, for fun. Uh, some people are just more interesting online, right? Yes. I mean, trends, um, live streaming, podcasts, uh, influencers. Now you're starting to see companies partner with individuals to create brands and create excitement around some of the stuff that's going on in agriculture. Um, Instagram stories, you're seeing more pictures, uh, uh, more uh, connect connectivity uh, and engagement from the consumers back to the farms uh, and vice versa, right? And better understanding some of the changing themes out there in the markets. Uh, so these are some of the things we'll, we'll chat about a little bit and uh, when we get serious. Um, I put a couple tweets, and I didn't tell you guys, I put some of your tweets up here. Um, nothing too bad. I, was, I had to run this by legal, so I, I had 20, and they put it down to about three or four. Um, these are, some of these are examples. Uh, you know, the first one's political. Uh, the second one, uh, Steve was asking about a specific issue he was having with a tractor and got a lot of responses, get a lot of information back from other people. It's a quicker way than trying to meet them at a coffee shop or uh, giving an individual a phone call. Uh, you can get a lot of responses quick. Um, Steven uh, made a, a comment, and I know that there was a lot of uh, Twitter action on this Netflix um, tweet they had the other day, which I thought was really funny too. The fact that they actually track how many users watch the same Christmas movie, like 18 days in a row which is pretty scary. Right. Uh, my wife might have been one of them. But, uh, you know, it, it goes to the point like privacy around, or, you know, who knows what your information is. And you were just making a joke about, well, now somebody knows, might know my down pressure on my back 40, right? right. How, that's not very material. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do now is I just wanted to throw a couple little slides out, kind of get the conversation going. 
But instead of me introducing these uh, five gentlemen, um, I'm going to actually have them introduce someone else on the panel. So you don't, I don't want you to introduce yourself, Randy. I think you picked Jared. Right. So go ahead and enter or uh, introduce Jared, and then Jared, whoever you picked, you can introduce whoever you want. Yep. Okay. All right. I have a little story to tell about uh, how small social media makes this world. Uh, my son got married this fall, and in the receiving line, had this gal come up to me, and she goes, I know you don't know me, but I know you, but you know my brother, kind of, through Twitter. And that person was Jared McDaniel. So uh, it just kind of shows how small social media can make this world and how you meet different people. And you were a big fan of his. Yes. I mean, I've been watching him since he was doing, we were talking about this earlier, the pioneering of like uh, Google uh, Hangouts and stuff like that. Jared started way back when, so. He's... Good, Jared, who are you introducing? All right, I'm introducing Steven. He's down here on the end. Uh, Steven Ellis, he's from Virginia. Uh, he said that he's at one point will be the the next head of the Mid-Atlantic FBN office, I think, is what he was going for. Was going for. And, uh, <laughs> I was a state senator. Oh, state senator, maybe. Yeah. Or state senator. He uh, farms and has a restaurant. Very interesting guy. Give him a follow if you're on Twitter. If not, go ahead and join Twitter and follow him. So that's Stephen. That's me. Um, I get to introduce Nick. Nick is, you know, big man on campus. He, um, <laughs> He, he's very, very, very tall, but that's not all he is. Um, he farms in eastern Iowa with his brother and his father. Um, he's got a lot of information. As you join Twitter, what we call Ag Twitter is a gr group of us that back and forth, back and forth on ag issues and everything else happening in the world. Well, um, I, I would call Nick maybe the sergeant at arms of Ag Twitter. You know, he, he kind of... When you get out of line, he's going to point it out to you and, you know, get you back in line. He's the enforcer? He's the enforcer. And um, as like me from Virginia being out of the Midwest, to get attention, you know, you had to, to be the man, you had to beat the man. So I started teasing the enforcers in <laughs> Iowa and Illinois until I got their attention. And then we kind of settled down. Settled down. And now I we let you come to our parties. Buddies. Now we're good buddies. Um, but... It's really neat, you know, to have people as we are from all over the country, you know, rural areas, but they are the fringe states, the main states, everything in agriculture. And we talk, if not daily, weekly. You know, somebody says something to somebody. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys have become good friends. I mean, most of you all know each other. And you got Virginia, Oklahoma, Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska. So... You're from all over the place, even though you got to know each other. So that's cool. Yep. Um, Nick Ehlers. I get to introduce Steve Fitstick, who is the social media legend. He's the one that pioneered all of this. Um, he's the guy. He, he, invented, he, he invented Twitter, right? He's, he's, he's everybody's mentor, whether they like it or not, or they, you know, whether it's good info or not. But he's going to tell them what he thinks. But, uh, no, Steve's been on it for a long time. One of the first people I've interacted with, and uh, he's a very smart gentleman. And uh, I think uh, the one thing with social media, whether you're Facebook, Instagram, any any forum, is like birds of a feather just kind of end up flocking together. You know, it, it just like the good people move this way, and other people move this way. You know, the same mindsets just kind of start to to mingle. So. I think everybody wants to try something new or be a pioneer. Or, you know, we all love technology, and we all just kind of group together. So I got the last draw. I got Randy. Poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I've known Randy since 2009, I think. We both got on Twitter in Probably. March or April of 2009. Right. So we've known each other a long time, but we just met for the first time yesterday in, in person. We've interacted quite a bit. Randy's a guy from Nebraska, that likes to boat likes to drink. No problems with either, but um, yeah, it's, it, it, uh, Egg Twitter has kind of collapsed the world. Uh, we're all, we all have the same problems. Uh, we're dealing with weather, whether it's Nebraska or Illinois or Iowa. Uh, we're dealing with the markets. Uh, 
government regulation, uh, the aggressive neighbor down the road that's trying to rent land. It's, it's all, we all have the same problems. So it's kind of neat to come together. It's, it's kind of a big coffee shop. Yes, that's one. The first thing I want to talk about um, is what, what different mediums you use. Nick, you brought up a handful. Um, you know, we kind of talk about Twitter a lot because Ag Twitter is kind of what seems to caught on, but you use different platforms for different reasons. Um, do you guys use a lot of different platforms, or is it mainly Twitter? Or, or tell me a little bit about that. You guys can just jump in. Well, so in 2009 or 2008 or 9, the the idea was to get out, and start using social media to promote your business or whatever it might be. And I looked at Facebook and looked at Twitter. And Facebook is more about telling your story if you want to put it out there and promote your business or whatever. But that wasn't me. I, I kind of want to be an influencer and, and challenge some of the things we do. Uh, and I found Twitter to be a better avenue for that. Part of it was the 140 characters getting to point, um, just uh, not rambling on or whatever. And Twitter's worked out really well, I think, for that aspect. So when you, you have Twitter, you've had Twitter followers for seven, eight years now, because that's how you've been long. What is it like when you finally meet that Twitter follower in person and you can see the disappointment in their face? <laughs> After years of following you, it, it, it's it's pretty neat. It's it's kind of it's uh yeah. You have guys coming up. It's on my bucket list to meet you. It's like wow, we finally meet. Wow, they need a better bucket <laughs> list. It's like, it's like wow, I'm not. I'm just a farmer guy. I'm not. I'm not anybody. All of us are just farmers, but we just uh, have risen to the top of the social media mainly because we've been on here for a long time. And once you meet somebody, you know they're in person. A lot of times there are similarities to the person you meet online, and then also sometimes you don't fit into the box they built for you, which is fine too. But you know, there's you get to know someone and their thoughts because really when you put it down on, on the screen, it goes from your head to that, and then they read it. So you're really going right from your mind to theirs. So you have kind of a conversation that goes back and forth for a long time. Then when you get in real life, like you said, the, the physical body language and everything else, it may be different than what you kind of assign that person or they've assigned to you. So it's unique, but it's still, it's knowing someone before you meet them. And most of the time, uh, you're, the way you picture somebody on Twitter comes out, you know, real in real life. There are exceptions to that, though. But for the most part, you know, everybody on this panel, you know, Steve and Steven and Jared, I guess we met for the first time yesterday. and. They're pretty much exactly like I thought they was gonna be. So, you you can tell if somebody communicates enough on any platform, you can tell whether they're being genuine or not. And you, you may tweak the edges or exaggerate part of your personality, but you can't hide who you are. And if you do, then you're not gonna get much attention. People are more. They're more drawn to the people like what's up here that will say whatever's on their mind at that moment, whether it be positive or negative, or whether it will affect whether they get a deal from an industry leader or not. You know, you've got to be able to, you know, say what you want to say. That's the big difference between Twitter and Facebook. On Twitter, you say what you want to say, and people will go, yeah, that was a little bit crazy, and move on. On Facebook, it becomes the next three days of your life. You know, everybody responding back and forth, your neighbors and all that. And, and um, they'll run you out of town. Yeah, they can run you out of town or yeah. kick you off the boards and all that yeah. good stuff. We don't need that. Um, but it's really cool to, you know, just say, say what's on your mind and say what a lot of people are thinking and maybe scared to say out loud, and you can say it there. Yeah, those, those are good points. Uh, so that's one thing I love about Act Twitter is that it seems more real than Twitter in general because most of the people that post usually have uh, a large company they work for, that, so they're somewhat filtered. Most ag Twitter's entrepreneurs, they own their own businesses. You're a little bit more free to say exactly right. what you, you mean, which also brings to the point where you, when you're trying to push certain, whether it's political issues or uh, you know, uh, you know, business issues, uh, there's a balance between being real, raw, and then being probably taken the wrong way sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you guys have been on it, you've probably seen a little bit of both. Um, so what advice, if somebody hasn't done Twitter or hasn't, doesn't even have an account or uh, maybe has never used it once they signed up, what would be your advice to get value out of it? How do you, like, 
set set a reason for doing it? What's your goal to do it? And and what would you recommend? I'd say that the first and foremost is if you get on it, don't be afraid to interact. You know, just to have a conversation like you would with anybody. Because, you know, you can read what everybody else says, but really when you add content to the conversation, then you're adding value. And more often than not, you'll just have a conversation like you would with the guy sitting next to you. You know, it kind of brings you closer together, and then those issues get discussed and discussed. And what happens is you start over here, and before you know it, you're over there talking about something completely unrelated. But you solve a lot of problems along the way. So, you know, interaction is the biggest thing I could think. You know, but everybody should do it for, for whatever reasons they want not really doing it for someone else, you know, kind of just do it on their own, their own time and own content. If you, if you do start up an account or do anything like that, uh, put a picture with it. Don't use the stock, you know, whatever that app uses or, or whatnot. Put a bio on there, even if it's just a sentence or something so that, I mean, you come across as a real person. If you work for a company, don't put your, this isn't my views in my company, we get it, right? We know. <laughs> Note to self. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we get it. Like, I don't know if legal makes you do that or what, but if you put that on there, I'm going to pull you out of that HR. I'm just going to pick at you until you break HR code, and then it's on. Like, I mean, that's just a challenge right there. Like, I don't have HR. I'm going to pull you out of their reign. Like, I'm going to make you say something that you're going to regret. <laughs> And you're probably one of the more effective on t Ag Twitter yeah, of doing that. You called me last fall. You were upset. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure upset. That was clarification. You were very I upset. You called. I was like, let's keep it going. And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was like I had to go to bed because you just kept direct messaging me. And no. I was like, it's 11. I'm tired. It was I'm daylight. going to sleep. You were mad. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I will file. He's bigger than me. <laughs> he is bigger than me. It's rare, but he is. No, I think I, a lot of people get on Twitter, and it takes a long time to figure it out. Uh, any platform. Any platform does. And, yeah. and I got on it, I think it took two or three years before I figured out what it was really about and started interacting with a few people. And, and my brand is a little bit different. I'm not trying to, to uh, show or tell my story. I'm kind of more aimed at uh, calling out uh, corporations or whatever, challenging some questions, stuff that's being force-fed to us. Just that kind of stuff. Just question everything, kind of. So that's been my, my place. Uh, just it's my brand. And that brings up a great point. You can have a lot of unfiltered conversations. You know, stuff that's not being somewhat censored, or you know, you can have talk to someone else some, in completely other sides of the country who, you know, you're not going to be like we'll discuss an issue, and then a month later you'll read about it in the magazine or you know whatever the. The current media is is usually about a month behind, and so when you open a magazine, a farm magazine, a paper, you know you see the things you discussed six weeks ago, three you know a month ago. So it's almost like you get that instant feedback, and you work through whatever problem or some some issue that's there, and then you move on. And then it's almost you're kind of watching everybody else unfold in delay time. I mean that was one of the first things I noticed was the quickness with the speed of conversation and content. Yeah, speed and detail. I mean, some of it's light and funny, but some of it, if it's a specific question or it's a policy issue or it's a whatever it is, some of it gets very detailed. I mean, some of the threads get really detailed. Yeah. It just shows you how much knowledge is out there, and I just think it's a better way to share and at least get different perspectives. And you, you can do it with marketing. You can do it with, you know, any kind of problem that is faced in ag. There's somebody out there who knows the answer, you know, and they're willing to answer it, too. And there's... That's what I was getting ready to bring up. Is the coolest thing about it because I have people that ask me why do you, you know spend so much time on it. First of all, it's fun. I wouldn't do it if it I didn't, wasn't having fun doing it. But it kills time with auto steer. It it blew up with auto steer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've got auto steer. You got sitting in line at the granary. You got three or four things that you need to kill time with. So you can do that. Keep your brain working. You meet like-minded people, and they not might be like-minded, but they are similar thinkers. You know. The, quick thinkers or the, you know, the ones that are willing to push the envelope, try new things. But the coolest thing I found about it, and I tell anybody, is once you get established where the people know that you're a real person, if I have a question to a 20-year-old veteran stock trader or commodity trader, I can put it out there and at least four of them will answer me. 
with something in real life that they have been through and tell you how that hedge would work or how it wouldn't work. Same thing with... Um, and they don't send you bills for that, right? No, no, they don't. And then same thing with, like, professors at universities. Not all of them, but there's professors out there that are on there quietly following. You send out a question, next thing you know, you're talking to an expert in the field. You get an answer quicker than if I had tried to email a company, you know, for a month. You know, I can pretty much get an answer from somebody may not be the one I want to hear or the right one, but you can get somebody to answer your question. Oh, that's great. I just want to note that congratulations. I think this is the longest that you five have not tweeted. I know, it's tough. It's My been like 15, off. 16 minutes or something. I'm, I'm just keeping track. Yeah, of I know you're itching. I see you pulled it out. Who keeps calling me trying to get my phone to ring while I'm out here? <laughs> But that's cool, too, because you get to meet people, and they really will start to mess with you. You know, just they're going to call Nick because they think it's funny. And that's, that's the joke that's con – there's, there's always, like, a running humorous joke, whether it be something there or an inside joke, and it's almost a little community that gets to partake in that. In babies? And it, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> it, and it even helps in you know, the, the times we're in. The times we're in aren't great. We're not having a lot of fun every day. But at least we can get on something and joke around a little bit. Or you can vent to somebody, you know, whether it's publicly on there or through a message. But you have an outlet to talk to somebody. And it, I mean, you might not be having the best day ever. You might be having a problem. But there's, there, there's always somebody that you can vent to. Right. Yeah. And you brought up, Steve, earlier the, uh, when you're waiting in lines. You know, I saw a lot of, you know, long line at the elevator or long line at the plant or whatever it may be. I'll bet they try to fix that. I mean, that visibility on, on Twitter nowadays, putting the pressure on companies to do that because they're monitoring this, and that can have as much impact as going in there and telling them they got to fix this. But if enough people tweet the fact that you've been sitting for 40 minutes waiting to drop grain off, you know, they're probably going to jump and try to figure out how they can fix it so the tweets stop. I think that'd be the last thing that Twitter ever fixes. No? <laughs> well, I'll put that at the bottom. You put that at the bottom? That and Bitcoin. Cancer. <laughs> Grain lines. Yeah. I did get an apology from guys at AGP plant for shutting down the scale about four trucks before they waved me so on. So an apology is a start, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Did you feel And good? then they brought cookies out to cookies? the guys yeah, sitting cookies. in line wow. next week. So, hey, got something out of it. <laughs> so how much is, what's too much and not enough? How, what's the usage? What, you know, have you dialed it back? Have you, can yeah, you even handle you your inboxes anymore? You have to dial it back sometimes. If you're getting frustrated, just put it down. Go do something else. Go play with your kids. Back away from the phone? Back away from the yep. phone. Let the battery die. <laughs> you know, something. There was a point I didn't like the like button or the heart button, what it is now on Twitter. And, I've learned to use that a lot instead of replying, so <laughs> it reduces the number of tweets you make. It gets in spells, but like he said, it's, it's a therapy, you know. It, we probably won't, not to say that, you know, if you need a therapist, go get a professional therapist. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a even. It's alternative. It's yep. But it's pretty cool, you know, to, you know, to be rung up about something, you know, not have to tell your neighbor who's going to go tell everybody else in your world, the real world. You can tell somebody in Oklahoma, they can say, yep, that sucks, move on. And you move on. You know, you vent it a little bit, you move on, and when everything is so stressful, whether it be long hours or money or everything, you know, the complaining helps a little bit. Now, if you complain all the time, you won't have that many people want to listen to you. But, um, but if, if, if you can be genuine and have good days, bad days, and indifferent, then it helps pass the time through, the, especially a busy time of the year. And, and we're real isolated. I mean, everybody knows what it's like. You may not see someone for 10 hours a day. So that helps to connect. You know, if you think thought comes into your head and it's maybe off the wall, but you can throw it out there and then someone else shares that thought, you know, you, you're, you're interacting as opposed to just sitting there stewing in your own head. You know, it, it's, you would, a, it's a good outlet. You'd be clinically insane if you didn't have social media, right? Yeah. Where you're at? Yeah, I mean, where I'm at, there's literally you no people. You have nobody so. to talk to. <laughs> and, just like cows. Yeah. And 
they're not very interesting. No, they don't talk back. They're no, good they listeners. Don't. Yeah, like they were talking, there's a lot of uh, stress in agriculture right now with the prices where they're at. And, uh, you know, a lot of people need to reach out and talk to somebody, and whether it's just talking to somebody through social media or whatever, uh, it's, it's an avenue. Uh, this summer, well, actually all of us at some point have done a podcast with Shark Farmer, and uh, good or bad. Were you talking and, about Bitcoin? Talk, I mean, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I, di I did a podcast this summer with him and, and uh, breached some uh, challenging topics in ag. Yeah, and much. I had about 100 people direct message me and want to talk about different issues that they related to. And it was just, it was pretty humbling. And it was, it felt good to help somebody else. Well, you brought up a good point. You, you kind of become a, a personality online. You're opening yourself up a little bit. I mean, yeah. you open yourself up pretty good there. And in other cases on Twitter or Facebook, you can do that. So you become... People know stuff about you. You got to be comfortable with that. So you got to just figure out what you're comfortable with, you know, putting out there. Because you know. Yeah, it was one of the toughest things I ever did. But uh, the way it turned out, and I'm sure that it helped quite a few people. And uh, that was the payback. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. When you do something like that, you don't realize how many other people are struggling with the yeah, same same, deal. same deals. So, and that definitely helps other people out too. We're like the happy clowns. You know, <laughs> you know, there's the sad clown and the happy clown, and they're all sad on the inside. But um, we're the happy clowns because, you know, you're not happy all the time. You're not excited to go do what you've got to do every day. But if you, you know, enjoy making somebody laugh or enjoy, you know, doing that, put it out there for a minute, you know, a couple of days. You know, back off, do it again. You know, it's one of those things that it's not true entertainment, but it's all together, it's enough entertainment that it really helps you, you know, enjoy life a little bit better. So where's it going? Is it gonna, are we going to be doing the same thing five years from now, or is it going to be different? Everything keeps evolving, so who knows where we're going. It's been a fun ride. Uh, Ten years ago, I had no idea that I'd be sitting up here t talking about Twitter, or that Farmers Business Network would even exist. So who knows? Just go along for the ride. I mean, you, you look at when Twitter started, it essentially was the first FBN because it was everybody coming together in a network. And, I mean, they kind of took it and monetized it and corporate, you know, made it something real. But a lot of what happens here has already been happening online, you know, years, years. ago. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and... and comparing prices. Yeah, comparing all prices. Yeah. I mean, all that, all that kind of openness discussion was happening right out there in front of everybody. And it was, it was in front of everybody but hidden in plain sight because there were so few people on it. And as more and more get on it, it's, you know, it's evolved, like you said. And, and, you know, there's not a lot of negative stuff you get back from it. There'll be a few people, but usually they're gone pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're always worried about exposing yourself. But, you know, people are people, and the jerks are gone pretty quick. Yeah, there's some bullies, no doubt, but they, they pretty much disappear. Yeah. Or, or everybody they get ostracizes them, yeah. you know, in the, they shame them into the corner, essentially. <laughs> I think, I don't know where it's going, but I know that it's going to become easier and easier. You know, like your tractor screen may be your Twitter, you know, a lot of people that use apps can do that Every now. farmer's going to be doing cab casts as they're going up and down the field. It's just, you know, you'll have it there. It'll have a camera built into it, and you can do whatever you want as you're working. It will be, you know, its own Internet source. It, it's all going to tie together. Now, um, is that good or bad? We don't know till we get it, but I'm pretty confident that enough open-minded people get hold of a technology. They're going to figure out something that's pretty cool to do with it. So I say just keep pushing the envelope and let people that think clearly figure out how to take that envelope and make it useful. It's kind of the same same theme, transparency. And Kevin talked about it this morning, and FBN is all about transparency, and I think Twitter's a little bit about transparency too. We all expose ourselves and talk about whatever. Yeah, I know, you, you know, the polls that we do is, you know, we don't really publish polls anymore, but we love it when members publish the polls, right? It's, it's your data. We send it back when we do these text polls, and then those get out on Twitter and and they're shared and commented on and whether that makes sense or doesn't make sense, those types of things. It's nice to see that. You know, we don't have official numbers, but we looked at a couple states and we figure across our membership, there's maybe about 18 to 20 percent 
uh, of our membership are on Twitter now. I wouldn't be surprised if that doubles in another couple years, another two, three years, where at least half our membership is probably on Twitter or Facebook or, act, or at least active on those. They probably have memberships but or uh, user IDs, but you know, active. So I think as much that happens now in Ag Twitter, I think it's just going to continue getting more conversations. The conversations will get deeper. And One thing I've noticed with companies, whenever like ag companies in particular, when they first got a, like a Twitter account, it was very static. Like I'm going to send you a link, or I'm going to, you know, they it's very black and white and, and kind of boring for the most part. And you'll see the ones that have somebody who actually interact as a human, or there's like another person on the end of it who will talk to you rather than just throw information at you because people get that and it just goes in the in the garbage. It's just spam, you know. But it, when you have another human for a company interacting, Wendy's. Do what? Wendy's. Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's, Wendy's is, is a perfect example. Yeah. There's guys that I mean, you'll you will remember that, and then you'll also remember that name or brand, and you're probably going to give them business over somebody who just spews, you know, just Control more stuff. stuff. Yeah, just fodder. You know, it's a major piece of the PR for any of those companies, or communication to their membership base or whatever it may be. And some companies are really good at it. Some companies are really bad at it. Companies it's, are taking note of what's going on out there too because uh, if something negative shows up they know about it and, and they try and take care of it now where they didn't you know maybe five years ago yeah I've tweeted a lot of stuff to John Deere and, and I've gotten to know the top person at John Deere PR now all in a good way but it's kind of neat and interactions and trying to develop that side of it and that they're more interactive with their customer base so hopefully it all grows and expands and I've said a lot of stuff to John Deere, and they haven't got back with me yet. It's usually a bit negative, so. You need more followers. You get to 8,000, yep. they'll, they'll return. But one thing that I, you made me think about talking about the, you know, the different platforms and the fact that some companies do it. Um, one of the big differences, most everybody knows what Facebook is. You know, you got to think through it. You got to respond, long form. You know, you're sitting there. A lot of people can sit there and plan out their posts over the next, you know, I'm going to take 20 minutes and write a Facebook post. If you're on Twitter and somebody, it's a back and forth, you have to be able to think that second what I'm going to type and type it. You, if you wait 10 minutes, it's gone. You know, you've moved on past through the timeline and it's gone. No so edit. No edit. Yep, and no edit. And then there's, there's only a certain amount of people that are very good at that for a business. So that's why I think that a lot of people, their businesses are stay away from it. You know, just be rote with your answers because you're not good enough to sit there and play along. You know, and eventually this next generation moving in, you know, a lot of people have 21, 22, three year olds in charge of the social media. They've got it. You know, they, they've been immersed with it their whole life. They're going to be able to handle it so much better five years from now than, than than the 50 year olds, like I'm close, no. <laughs> but uh, you know the older ones that have not been emerged with it aren't going to run their company's Twitter as good as the younger ones will eventually once they get brave enough to say what they want to say. And not every company can fix your problem from a tweet. I mean, yeah, you can get it out there. Like I'm having this problem. Somebody else is like, you're not alone, but that's not going to fix your combine in five minutes. So settle down. But at least you're, you know, you know you're not the one that's alone, and you know the company knows. But you you have peace of mind knowing that there is a solution. You're not the only one. We had uh, just make they're making me talk because I think of stuff. But um, <laughs> the because you're a quick thinker, right? You just talked about how quick a thinker you are. Yeah, we have a um, we have a um, a header with a problem. It was a three-year-old, you know, I won't blow him up right now, but a Draper header that wouldn't work right. And I just said, what the hell's wrong with all this, you know? <laughs> you know? And I got back like eight, quest eight answers from all over the country, and a couple of them said they changed something the year after your model, and it works better. Well, we tell our dealer, which is in Virginia, which has none of the social media stuff going a whole lot with it, and they've never heard of it. And I'm saying, well, it's true, you know, just look it up. Well, they finally went and found the kit that upgrades the old header into the new header. They brought it the next morning, put it on, and it helped. 
but nobody in our area would have even known it existed except I talked to the people that have such a more saturation of equipment that they have more answers. So on the lighter side, uh, Stephen, I got to know, a profile pic is one of the first things they see mm -hmm. about you. Right. You look a little angry in the pic. Yeah. I would figure you... like a serial killer. Yeah. 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 Is there a story behind it? Was it a memorable day? Was it your anniversary? What was... It, um, it kind of is a little bit of everything. One is you're taking a picture of yourself. How are you going to be happy about that? You, you know? Do you eat some Chipotle? No, no Chipotle that day. Okay. Um, the other thing is, you know, when I smile, I don't like the way I look. So, you know, take a picture and you do like that. And I've had a little running joke for three or four years where I will play music and make a little vine or video now and I will That's just funny. nod my head without making any expression to whatever song's playing, girly pop, rap, whatever. And that's what I do. It's stupid, and I know it, but everybody still likes it, so I keep doing that's it. That's you. If you, yeah. if you <laughs> put a new profile pick up tomorrow smiling, right. people will probably unfriend you. Yep, and they wouldn't recognize me from a stupid video. What's going on here? Yeah. I'm just worried Steven's going to hurt himself in one of them videos someday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty, pretty steady. You just sit there and nod your head. <laughs> All right, well... Taylor, I know we've got we might have some we've got some time for questions, uh, so I want to open it up. Uh, these guys, you guys can pull out your phones if you need to, too, and check on check on what's going on. But do we have any questions? We'll just take questions in the room. If we've got any questions for the guys, uh, let's take some questions in the room, and then we'll see if there's anything online too. Because I think we're checking online. I've got some guys walking around with mics. Is there any questions? that you haven't already asked these guys online. Yeah. Prince is dead. <laughs> um, who? Prince. Oh, the singer? Um, the Prince the, the singer. The, uh, Prince like was one of my favorites, and um, I enjoy all his music. I think he was a great person. Somebody had a video somewhere of somebody being told that Prince was dead, and she threw a little fit and rolled on the ground. And I think for about 18 months, I told everybody Prince was dead. And Jared would ask me, Prince who? You know, because that's what they did on the video. And we just did it morning, every morning for a while until everybody got sick of it. And then we kept doing it because that was the funny <laughs> part. That's when it got good. We ran yeah. it right into the ground and then ran over it and ran it into the ground again. Yep. But that was the funny look. <laughs> and then he brought it back up. Yep. But, um, but. No. <laughs> just, Jared, just Jared, has, Jared has to drive four hours to go to a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> he is in the middle. And of by the restaurant, door. we yep. mean like a Taco like Bell. Taco Bell, mm -hmm. yeah, or some yeah. some Tex-Mex restaurant. Honey, something. we're going out but tonight. How, how Nick knows this is because he was able to drive out there this summer. Spring or uh, uh, early spring, we we or, took uh, hay down. Yeah, we hay down. And that's another cool thing about social media is, is Nick and Sean Harmon brought hay down from Iowa to where we were going and we were able to, where the fires were at, and, but they knew how to get there and people that were there, like everybody kind of got connected through social media. So in a way, a backdoor benefit of this is they were helped, to, helped a lot of people that really needed it at a bad time. And we needed uh, your, was it your ex-boss? We needed his number to get a hold of him in the middle of the night to get unloaded. Yep. Okay, so we just sat through a whole thing about Twitter, and you didn't even put your Twitter handle up there. Oh, What's yeah, why don't you guys go ahead and give out your Twitter handles? I thought you were going to have a slide. Uh, not of your handles. Okay. Wow, you prepped really well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. The Twitter handles aren't funny. Your profile pics are funny. Mine's at, uh, at Corn Farmer, and the farmer is F R M R. You spelled it wrong, yeah, by the way. I did, yeah. <laughs> Mine's just at Pitstick Farms, P I T S T A C K. Mine's just at Jared McDaniel, like it's spelled. So. Mine is at Nick Ehlers 01. I had to get the 01 because the first guy beat me. 
<laughs> Mine is S. Ellis, so S E L L I S, 1994. And it's 1994 because my wife is nice enough to let me be on Twitter, and we got married that year. Oh, I have to say Bitcoin <laughs> one more time to win a bet. <laughs> you so, just did. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. I know that, um, it, Taylor, do we have anything from? So one question that we had was, you guys talked about it a little bit, but what is your advice for people coming onto Twitter? I think one thing important to mention is to have a good sense of humor because usually it's straight sarcasm. So if you guys want to talk about just advice for guys getting on there. Um, and then another question was um, a piece of advice or something you learned on Twitter that you guys actually implemented on your farm that's made a difference for you. I think the advice I'd take is, uh, or give, would, it's already been given, it's, you know, have a profile picture, have a bio, uh, be yourself, and uh, sometimes you have to have a little thick skin, you know, there are some times you get something negative, but don't let it bother you because, the, like we said, those people usually are gone right away anyhow, but just be yourself and, and who you are. Yeah, I got my, my profile picture is at the mothership in San Francisco. I guess nobody thinks about Facebook and Twitter and Apple. Those There's actually real estate where those places are and I had the chance to be in San Francisco, so I got my picture taken underneath the Twitter, Twitter uh, logo. So it's just kind of neat to have that as a profile pic. I guess my advice would just be go have fun with it. I mean, that's you've got to laugh sometime during the day. You might as well, you know, laugh with someone that you might see one point in the future. Or not. Either way, you know, just enjoy it. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Take it with a grain of salt for sure um, and have fun. I get, uh, the second part of the question, uh, how, how have I used it on my farm or whatever? I've, I think I've used a lot of ideas through grain marketing, networking with people like that, um, maybe add-ons to... Maybe new technology. I think I've leaned on Steve a few times about some of that stuff. And even roadside help. I mean, I have a story with Randy where I think Ben's here. I drew the short straw on the Midwest Crop Tour and got Ben's vehicle that day. And he didn't have air conditioning. And we were in southern Nebraska. And that's not going to fly. And I was begging somebody else to switch me. And everybody knew ben did, Ben's air didn't work. So... I seen the route, we were going through Hastings. I texted Randy, I was like, hey, is there an auto zone there or anything? I'm gonna fix this kid's air conditioning. And Randy's like, no, just stop by, we got a can of stuff here and everything. And they went out and scouted and uh, fixed the air conditioning and the uh, foreign hedge fund guys in there were looking at me like I was some sort of mechanical god. <laughs> I'm like, all I did is plug in this can o Freon and we're gonna be good till at least I get out of this vehicle. <laughs> On the technical side, Twitter is different than a lot of things. I guess Facebook's the same. I don't do a whole lot with that, except for try to promote my re restaurant. But you have to follow people. You know, if you're following 100 people, you're not going to get much out of it. You know, you've got to go follow 600, 800 people. And, if, and of different walks of life and of different attitudes toward life. You, if you follow everybody that believes exactly what you believe, you'll gain nothing from it like the rest of life. So go follow people you disagree, follow people you agree, and then see who interacts. And when you see who interacts, if you like that, follow them. Well, eventually, if you are interacting with them, they will follow you. You know, I've got a thing. I don't follow quite as many as others because I still try to read the whole thing every day, which kills up way too much time, but I still try to do it. And I'm like, well, if you're any good, somebody's going to re retweet you and I'll see it in their timeline. You know, it's that type of thing. And once, you know, if somebody gets retweeted two or three times in a row, then I'm like, I should be following them and I, you know, they're better than I am. So, you know, you learn people, but you, if you're not following anybody, you, you'll think it's the dumbest thing in the world. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. And, and when I started Twitter, I followed a lot of companies and then a lot of news and then the people started coming in. Now I'm trying to get rid of the news or the 
<laughs> companies that I don't really need to follow anymore and try to find a balance because it's not always people you follow. We always talk about the people to people interaction, but I get news out of it. I get, you know, I get company updates out of it or whatever it is. And that you'll real get news, you get news faster than, yeah. you know, you'll see it on there and read and have the whole story and then you go to any Fox News scene or whatever and 30 minutes later you'll find out what, you know, the breaking news is. But in all real, you know, and if you're talking about like markets where you're dealing with grain, you know, that could mean there was times that the Twitter edge might be a nickel on a, on a big volatile day because you would have that information, you know, at the same time, the, at very best, the traders, at very worst, you know, you'd have it long before the rest of the market did. And it's still that way to an extent, but now everybody's on it. But. 11 o'clock on report day, my phone pretty much blows up, so yeah. we know what's going on. USDA reports, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a, the best source for real-time ag information that probably is out there. Yeah, agreed, uh, you know, and, and marketing, and you know, because we use it for information on marketing, I always find it funny, Ag Twitter and, and the, the weathermen. So that's kind of been a long running. <laughs> no, not, don't touch that topic. Don't touch, yeah. I, I, I enjoy those, so I think varied I, opinions. I believe next year will be different. Yeah? Yeah. Nobody's going to believe any weatherman, any crop condition report, mm -hmm. or anything. So. Well, half, every farmer seems to be kind of a half practicing, funny. you know, meteorologist ourselves. Yeah. Well, yeah, like 90 days after fog, it rains. I mean, that's like proof. That's a given. That's, that's a given. <laughs> um, if anybody else has a wives' tale, I'll take it right now because I'm coming up with a blank. <laughs> Taylor, you got another one? Yeah, so one more question. Um, Joe Mills, who just actually hopped off our cover crop panel in the last session, would like to know what's up with Nick's boat shoes. Oh, they're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and then a more serious question would be um, international relationships, even outside of the U.S. Somebody asked you guys to comment on those kind of relationships you've been able to build. So, Every single Canadian farmer is on social media, all of them, and their kids, and their dad, their mom. All 32 of them. We have a few here, too. All so. 50 of them. <laughs> they're all on it because they are in the, I mean, if Jared's in the middle of nowhere, they're on the edge of the world, so they have nothing to do. So they want to interact. They want to talk all the time. And then you have, uh, there's a lot of guys in, in Europe that are on, mm -hmm. in Australia. 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 Say New Zealand, Australia. 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 About midnight. Australians, yeah, they come on about midnight. And then um, South America is a little harder area to crack, I think. They're, I don't know what it is, but. Um, I think it's less English. Yeah, I don't think they speak English there. Yeah. But, um, even, <laughs> but there's a neat function on Twitter. It's, if there's another language, when you open it up, you can hit a button and it'll immediately translate from whatever language yes. is in. Yes. So you're reading, so, you know, you see a picture of a combine that's halfway buried in Brazil, and you hit the picture, and, and it's some guy saying, "Well, look what my stupid hired hand did." But he's, you know, it's translated <laughs> from Spanish or Brazilian yeah. or whatever to English. So it's a little bit like the, you know. It will translate for you, almost like a babble type deal. Mm -hmm. So you can you can't connect with people in other countries that don't even speak the same language with just an app you download on the yeah. phone. Everybody knows a, a little Spanish, but it does pretty good Sweet. translating it. Yeah, I've had four or five um, like ministers of agriculture of other countries follow me, but I don't think that lasted long. I think they <laughs> I think they thought they were getting something that they didn't get. <laughs> They still follow you, or they only followed you for a short time? I think they followed me a short time and said, you know what, I'll just pass on him. You know, he's a little foolish for me. But it's pretty cool when you see, like, Myanmar or whatever, you know, Minister of Agriculture, and, you know, he's following a thousand people, and you're one of them. And was the picture a really hot chick? Nope. Okay. Nope, it wasn't that kind. It was real. Okay. <laughs> he, he had links and everything that went to actually government sites and not... Gotcha. Other sites. Right. <laughs> he had he had five thousand dollars of your money in an offshore account that he needed your social you get, security for. You get them yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those come daily. <laughs> you so still haven't got any of those checks yet. One last thing, um, probably perhaps the longest running topic on Ag Twitter, and this came from Nick's wife, is the hashtag No Yield tweets. Um, that seems to get a lot of traction every summer. If you guys want to just talk really quickly about that too. I didn't, I didn't get anything. That, did you get any of that? Was it no yield tweets? Yeah. Okay. No way. I, oh. I, some, some things just become a thing of their own and just take off. And 
It's out of your control. It's kind of like Seinfeld in an inside joke. If you're there and, you, and you're part of it, you'll get it. But if you're not, it, you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And so in a, in a way, you almost have to be part of that conversation to get a lot of the material that's going on, you know. And then it becomes self-fulfilling. Those things start to become big because they are big and people enjoy it. I mean, it's just a running joke almost. East, Eastern Iowa and Illinois have above average yields. We don't need to see them every day. I don't put them up. Not uh, I love the yield monitor pictures right. of Harvest, right? But yeah. um, Virginia, I can put mine up every day and it doesn't affect the world because they're lower than everything else. But, um, but that's where it came from. They just, you know, you, you, you got markets rolling 30, 40 cents a day saying there's no corn. Nobody needs to see a 250 bushel yield monitor pick right then. You know, just let it go. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, we are already out of time. Any, I want to announce we have a, uh, what's it called, a tweet up? A tweet up, meet up for uh, drinks out here that the guys are going to be at, and I know a bunch of other people that are on Twitter out in the audience are going to be at, and Taylor uh, is setting that up. So go ahead and meet out at 4 o'clock if you want to do that. And uh, any other parting words of wisdom? <laughs> that does not surprise me <laughs> at all. Just, just take it with a grain of salt. I mean... It's, it's one person's thought for, it's, well, it's 280 characters now, but just take it with a grain of salt, you know. Don't let it ruin your day. There are half a dozen hot topics that you just want to stay away from if you're not ready f to blow your phone up. So. Trump, Bitcoin. What's that? Green bins. <laughs> Green bins. Green bins. Green bins. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to do with corn in eastern Iowa if I didn't have bins? You don't pay. <laughs> Just sit in a 60 hour long line. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you guys for, for doing this, being under the bright lights. And uh, I know that it's going to open up here before our 4 o'clock start. And I think they're going to have some drinks and stuff out there.